Hello guys, my name is Tu. In this video, I'll be talking about the lattice uh, structure in the latest uh, NX uh, continuous release. So, not only that NX can um, develop lattice structure in the CAD environment, but we also can use the lattice structure for simulation purpose. So without further ado, let me just quickly cre create the lattice for this uh, 3D geometry. So the lattice will fill within the um, solid body. So let's assume that I'm using the um, bi triangle with a rod diameter of 0.2 as such. So click apply to assign uh, the lattice generation at this region. So the lattice is generated as a facet body. So the next location to generate the lattice is at this uh, surface, uh, at this uh, cavity. So we will be using a uh, conformal type because the cavity is uh, having a different um, geometry, it's a different shape. So for example, we can choose a different type of the layout. For example, the tri trial and having a rod diameter as 0.2 as well. So we can um, click OK to accept the layout. So once this is done, uh, we can uh, proceed to the simulation environment directly. So let's go to the Files tab and click Pre-Pose to proceed to SimCenter 3D or previously known as uh, Annex CAE application. So we'll quickly create the files re required, so new fam and simulation files. So by clicking the OK button here, the lattice will automatically, automatically be converted into the 1D mesh. As you can see, this is a very convenient uh, tool because uh, the lattice is defined in the CAD environment and the 1D mesh of the lattice is generated automatically by recognizing the lattice structure in the CAD environment. So you can quickly look into the um, connections, the beam collections. So let's say this will be the um, beam collectors for the first lattice. The properties is using the lattice mesh one. You can quickly have the preview. So it's not showing. And then we can click to see the properties. For example, this is a rod uh, with a radius of 0.1. So the next property is lattice mesh number two. It's having the same property. For three, it's also having the same property. So actually, we can just use one of either one of them will give the give us the same thing. Then for the material, we assign just a steel material because assuming that we are going to do a metal 3D printing. So you just quickly put all the mesh into the same collectors because they are all sharing the same properties. For example, the, um, the beam, uh, the raw diameters, and also the material. So once this is done, we can proceed to connect the 1D mesh to the 3D geometry. For example, we can go to the 1D connections and choose 1D mesh to face. We'll be choosing uh, this two mesh and then choose the face of this, uh, the surrounding face uh, to the 1D mesh. So once the meshes, once the face has been selected, we just put a value of one here to establish that this. So this one represents the uh, uh, the distance between the 1D mesh to the 3D face, 3D geometry's face. Uh, if if the distance is uh, less or equals to one, then the connection is established. And the connections that I would like to use uh, is a C-beam type rather than the um, rigid uh, beam elements because I I think that the C-beams is a much more simpler um, 
methods of joining the lattice to the 3D mesh. So click OK to accept the recipes. Now let's move on to create another 1D connect connections between the 1D mesh here and also the faces surrounding it. For example, these faces. So we can turn off the display of this geometry to help our selections. So now that all the surrounding faces has been selected, we can just quickly click on the OK button to accept the settings. Now we'll just quickly create the 3D tetrahedro mesh for this geometry. So assuming that I would like to put the element size of 3 tetrahedral tent and accept all the default settings at, at the below uh, settings. So now that the 3D mesh has been done, we can quickly assign the material for the tetrahedral mesh uh, as the same material to the lattice structure. And also we can quickly look into the connection established. Um, so this will be the connections between the 1D mesh and also the 3D mesh. So, so now once the mesh has been done, we can proceed to define the boundary conditions. For example, I'll be using the fixed constraint to fix to select the two uh, bolt holes locations at this location and notice that I'm using the geometry to do my selection this will actually help to um, the workflow to become uh, to accelerate the workflow and it's much convenient for the analyst so and I also can use uh, a geometry for the force load de definitions. For example, I'm defining the magnitude of 1000 uh, Newton moving in the x direction, in this direction. And before I start to run the simulation, I would like to output more results for the beam, uh, for the beam mesh, 1D beam mesh. So I will go to the case control and uh, edit the output request to output more, um, to output the force request for the 1D uh, meshes. So by outputting this force uh, mesh, I can compute the von Mises um, stress for the beam elements later on. So now I can proceed to solve my problems. Now that the solution has been solved, let's quickly look into the results. We have the displacement results. So notice the 1D mesh and the 3D tetrahedral mesh moving together as one. So we can quickly hide the um, mesh display. Okay. And also let's look into the stress results. For example, the stress result here, and we can quickly edit the stress result for the 1D beam element. I would like to uh, output the maximum values among the four recovery points, so I will be choosing maximum here. And at the same time, I would like to calculate the beam results from stress, uh, from force, and also beam geometry. So this will give. This options is available when I choose the force output just now. So let's quickly click OK. So this will be uh, the stress results. And also I can uh, change my results to average results. 
So as you can see, some of the areas here, we have a high stress. So this concludes this video. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.